Hi guys, it's Matt from Maxon UK here, and in this video we're going to be looking at how to export a sculpted object to be used in a games engine. So how to export that sculpt data as something that can be used as a normal map in any games engine. So in a previous video what I have done is uh, UV mapped, um, I UV unwrapped this object and um, you know it's uh, one that I've made and sculpted and experimented with and then I have made this UV map that will allow me to transfer it into a games engine. To do that what I'm going to do is go change my layout to sculpt there we go because then we get to the bake sculpt object here so the UV map will allow um, as few as seams as possible because I have chosen to uh, the way that it has been mapped together. If I go to my bake sculpt objects, it is possible to choose um, optimal mapping and that will make its own one, but it will make loads of di different UV islands which will create lots of seams when it comes to putting it into a games engine. So let's just have a look at my baking here. Uh, you can see that I've used it in this file before. Um, so I'm going to make sure that I have normal map selected because that is what this is going to be creating. Um, I'm going to make sure that it is the level 6 because that is my top level that contains all of my sculpt data. And I'm going to choose level 1 for this. Okay, Level 0 I think contains too few polygons for be able to it to work. So I'm going to choose level 1 and see how that maps itself across. When it comes to baking, you need to choose where it is that you are going to put it. So I can choose Sculpt Baked, uh, and I'm going to just call that Normal, so that I know that it creates the normal map uh, for me. PNG is a good file to be using, because it's used by a variety of different games engines. And make sure that your color depth is currently at 16 bits per channel. That's what I've found works for me. Having a pixel border of 10 means that there is sort of, it gets rid of as many seams as it can do because it does sort of expand the lines ever so slightly, the, the image ever so slightly outside of the um, UV map border and that works quite well. And then I'm going to leave create result copy on so that I get a second copy in here and I can see how it works. When it comes to the settings, I am going to use tangent. Okay, you can use object, but I find that tangent works better. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be using. And then I'm going to leave continue UVs on for me. And then all you simply do is click bake and it will process this. Uh, it shall take some time, so I shall speed this up a second. Okay, cool. So if I just go to my object, you can see that I've got a second one there. Um, where are my hexes gone? There we go. And I can just move that across. And you can see, there we go, we have two copies now of that. And you can see it's it's applying that normal map in the editor. It doesn't look that incredible at the moment, but actually when you render, you'll find that it does do quite a good job of replicating that. It goes a little bit funny around the ears, but I think that's probably because of the way I sculpted. I had it too sharp in the model and it doesn't know what it's supposed to do. Okay, but there we go. We have our export already with our normal map there. Okay, then what I would do, select the one that's got the normal map applied and I will go to file and export FBX. Now, I am using R19 body paint here, so I've got a few really useful options. So I'm um, just going to stick this on the desktop and I call it Dragon Sculpt FBX and click Save. Okay, because one of the things I can do is choose selection only. So it's not going to export the entire file, it's only going to export this. I'm just going to untick some stuff that I don't need because I'm not taking any lights or animations or tracks. I want my normals. I want that to go. I will be using this because it's using the normal map to be able to take it. OK, that's what I shall be using. Um, and then click OK and it should export that onto my desktop. So if we just have a look, um, let's have a look at my desktop. There we go. 
Um, you can see that we've got this sculpt bake normal PNG now, um, which is oh, I've got it loading up twice. And this is the this is the map it creates. Now it is, so you can see that it does skew and stretch depending on the um, UV map that I have created, and it's not it's not too bad. You know you need to give it a little bit of a glance over, see if there's anything that maybe where stuff is too squished more than spread out. Spread out doesn't seem to be too much of an issue, but if the polygon itself isn't big enough on the UV map to be able to contain the data then I find that the 3D looks quite nasty. So just have a quick glance through and you can see or rather try to spot anything that goes wrong. If not, if you are happy with how everything works then we shall take it into a games engine. Then in my games engine what I shall do is I shall import my new asset so on my desktop there is my drag and sculpt and I'm just going to drag and drop that into my scene. It brings up this message and says um, that the material is being used as a normal map but it isn't registered as a normal map on here. Do I wish to fix it? And my answer is yes, because then it converts it in Unity to a registered normal map. Okay, there we go. And I should be able to just drag and drop my little dragon in there. Okay, it doesn't seem to have registered that as a normal map. Oh no, there it is. It just took a time, took a second to update. There we go. And here we have our little dragon sculpt in there. So it is using that normal map data to produce my little dragon there. And you can see we've got a few seams that are in the way, or rather out of the way. That's why I, um, you know, did that UV map. Uh, in the interesting way that I did so that the sculpt data stays together and we've got as few as seams as possible that we can see within the games engine. So there we go. I hope that was a useful tutorial for you. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe or check out blog.maxon.co.uk